Hey y'all, it's Elizabeth over at Elizabeth's Creative Hands. Welcome back to those of you that subscribe to me and welcome if it's your first time viewing my channel. Um, I told you that I was going to show you how I made these acrylic paint holders out of Dollar Tree napkin holders. This was not my idea. This was created by a woman named, her channel name is Tina Did It. Tina Did It. So I'm going to show you how to make these today. I made mine just a tad different than hers. And then I'm going to show you what I came up with, which of course is already put together. This is the second time we're filming this. Had a little bit of glitches here and there with it. So this is what I made and you'll see what that turns into because I'm going to show you how to make it first and then I'll show you how to make the holders for the paint. And let's see if we can get this up a little bit here. Hold on just a sec. So sorry. Me and my cameras, right? Okay, we're going to put it right there and hope that y'all can see. Maybe I'll pull it back a little. I'll push it forward a little. There we go. Okay. What I did was, you're going to need one of these. They come four to a pack. I got these at Walmart. It's called Art Mines, and they are 2.6 inches by 5.3 inches, and they come four to a pack, and I used it for a base so that this would stay sturdy and not fall over. You're also going to need the Gorilla Clear Glue, just a drop of it. This stuff is thicker than E6000 and it holds better and you're only going to need one tiny little drop on each of the zip ties. Speaking of that, you're going to need two small zip ties in this size. Now, Tina did it, used zip ties from the Dollar Tree, but these I have are a lot stronger. The ones at the Dollar Tree tend to snap on me because they're thinner. They're made out of a thinner plastic. But you can use whichever ones that you want. What I did was I also had two cups, the wire mesh cups from the Dollar Tree. And you're going to use one of these napkin holders from the Dollar Tree. And it's going to stand upright like this, like you see it right here. And what I did was, I went in on the inside, well first on the outside of the cup, I just took my scissors and punched a little hole above this bar right here and below this bar right here. Then you're going to take your small zip tie and you're going to insert it you know we want this side that this side that pokes out it needs to be down so that you can run your zip tie through it and what I did was I went in through the inside of the cup under where I made my hole then back up around it into it zip tied it and cut off the excess and I did that to both sides and then I took my glue and just barely, if you can see this, just barely a little dot right there and a little dot right there and let that dry. And then I took and put it on top of the wood piece that I was telling you about and I marked my cup and I glued with this same glue 
that part of the cup and then I glued a little bit along each side of these I'm sorry not in frame of these brackets so that it would all stick to this and I let it sit and what this is for is to hold your paint supplies that you're going to be using while you're painting for the inside it holds really well your rags or cloths that you're going to wipe your brushes on after you rinse them in your paint water now these are old brushes <laughs> but one side is going just pull the brushes that you're going to be needing for your project um, and you're going to put them in one side and that's where you're going to keep them until you're done with your project and then you're going to clean them and put them back in something that is wrapped so that you don't get dust and dirt and all that kind of lint and stuff like that all over everything because that's going to wind up in your paint the next time and if you leave paint inside inside your uh, brushes and it dries when you go to paint with them next time even if it's like up at the top it is going to soften up and it's going to come out of the brush and it's going to get on whatever you're painting and good luck with uh, getting that off uh, while it's wet and then you'll have to paint back over it again so the tip for today is always wash your brushes when you are done with them dry them and put them out I just use a simple hand soap or an antibacterial soap and these are all kind of old brushes I just use them they're cheap brushes and what I do with mine is I just keep them in Ziploc bags and as you can see it says cheap paint brushes so, and then I roll them up and I have a bag for my round brushes my um, flat brushes angled brushes foam brushes I have a bag for each of those and I have some really good fox hair brushes that I've had for about oh 25 years and um, they have they're in such good shape but they're in good shape because I took care of them now chippy brushes that you're using to distress with and stuff like that it it really doesn't it really doesn't matter you can kind of rinse them out and just get the as much paint out of them as you can and um, just put them back in but that is how I made that and then on the other side is where since these are covered I'm going to keep my pencil which I draw things with to paint and all my paint pens and things like that are going to store over there so I don't have to worry about having another place for that and if it's really nicely like this and doesn't take up very much room on your craft shelves so this I came up with now I'm going to show you what Tina did it came up with and as soon as I saw it I subscribed to her and she's got some really other cool things that she's making with these Dollar Tree um, napkin holders which you'll see my one I made sits this way these are going to sit this way now if you only need to make one it's only going to cost you four dollars and some zip ties because most of you already have glue on hand the glue on hand and once they're put together they look like this as you can see I can keep all my colors together I made four of them I'm only showing you three because the fourth one I have all my extenders and paint mediums fabric mediums to paint on fabric with and I'm going to get the stuff together and show you as best I can how to do this. The only thing that she did different than I that, that I did different than she did was she used some E6000 up here. 
E6000 can be very runny. She was uh, putting it on her zip ties like I did on that one over there. But that's the good thing about this glue. It's not runny. And her E6000 has started to like roll off and drop down through here. But what I did in the middle was instead of using any glue for this, I jumped up a size in my zip ties. These are very th strong and very thick. Now, you have to cut the ends of these, turn them under so you don't get all poked and everything. So you're probably going to want, I couldn't fit my, I couldn't fit my wire cutters like this down in there. So I got out my metal cutters and they have a very pointy tip so it works really well. If you try to cut the thicker ones with just scissors, you're not going to get anywhere. Now, your last resort is to cutting the middle tabs off the thick ones. is is like an X-Acto knife, a box cutter, whatever. But please be very careful. Don't cut yourself. So, I'll be right back when I get this set up and show you how this is done. Okay, I'm back. Didn't have my light on. I was like, why can't I see the stuff on the table is good? That was the problem. Okay, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take, and you're going to take one of your small ones. This side right here is the side you're going to poke it in, so we're going to go in from the, from the left. And we are going to go around these first right at the top if you can see what I'm doing I'm going to poke it through I'm going to pull it tight but not completely and it's okay if these are sitting like this and not just right on top of each other it will all work out in the end I promise and you're going to put another one on this side same thing this goes in like this put your zip tie in and pull it and then we're going to do the same thing to the bottom Two small zip ties, one at the top, push it in, and pull one at the bottom. Remember, we want that facing like that. See that sliding down because we haven't tightened it completely all the way. We're going to put this at the bottom, push it in, pull, now we're going to tighten them so you're going to take a pair of pliers like this, mine are old as the hills, and you're going to take, put your finger her finger now on the thick part of the zip tie and pull. Gotta shove this back to the top. It's not completely tight, but it's getting ready to be. Hold on to the thick part of the zip tie, right up against the metal, like that, and pull. See, but mine didn't break. You're going to take this. You can lay it on its side, too, if you want. And you're going to pull. Then you're going to take, now regular scissors will work on the small ones. And take and you're going to cut. 
Don't cut too far down there. They can come out. Cut. And the reason I don't have two at the top is because I'm going to put two on the top. Okay. Then we're going to take this. We do need one at the top here, though. Hold that little thing. And you're going to clip. Now we're going to take, oh, we did need to put one more. Right here. We're going to shove it through. This is going to be at the top. Hold the piece that you shoved the zip tie through and pull. Now, what we're going to do is, you see all these little pokey things sticking out? We're going to turn them in toward the center so it's not going to poke our paints or our hands or anything. You can take and it will, it will, it will slide around at this point either way. And just make sure that they're facing in right there. You see them? And we're going to do the same thing to these. Push it around until it's kind of sitting between this gap here. All of them. Okay. Now we're going to switch over to our bigger zip ties. And we're going to put, once again, the big piece facing down. We're going to put one here. Hold that piece down. They are hard to pull. You can find these at like Lowe's, Home Depot. Just saves you time and saves you from having to wait on glue to dry and stuff like that with a project like this if you do get these. Now like I said, you try to use your scissors, it's not gonna it's it's just not gonna cut through it. So I have my little handy dandy wire cutters and I'm going to snip that easy. And then we're going to take that and we are going to turn it down so that the pokey part on it that we cut off is now also in the center. So no paint nor your hands are going to come up through there. Then we're going to take another one and we're going to go down on this last one right here. The middle doesn't really need one because this thing is not going to come apart, you guys. It gets a little wonky when you're putting it together, but just be patient. Take your time. And it will all work out. These are very hard to pull with just your hands, so make sure you use your pliers and just pull. This is where I'm telling you that scissors are not going to work. Wire cutters you can't fit in to get it all the way back to where you cut it. So you take your metal cutters that have the pointy tip on it so you can get right in there and just snip. Then you're going to take and you're going to turn that. Here we are at the top, turn it back over. You're going to take that and you're going to push it back around to where all those pokey pieces you see are in the middle. Nothing's going to get poked. It's not going to put a hole in your paint or anything like that. I'm going to take a little more off of this one. Okay? Then we're getting, you can see this is on there very, very good. It's, it is not going anywhere. It is on there. So now I'm going to take and make 
another one exactly like that out of this and I'll be right back and show you how to connect them together. Okay, now you should have two pieces that are put together the same way. We're going to take this piece and we're going to sit it on top of this piece. Now this is where you might have to wrangle around with it a little bit because it doesn't want to cooperate sometimes. Okay, you're going to take this on your between your top part here up onto the one that you put on. Like I said, you're going to have to wrangle with it a little bit. Okay, what we can do, we can lay it on the side also. I just like doing it the other way so that I make sure that it's even. But you can do this to get them on before you pull them tight. So you can lay them on their side. Just don't tighten them. Because you're going to want to set it up for that. But they will fall off a lot of times and things when you're trying to do it standing up. It's just a lot easier to do it this way. So you got those two hooked. We're going to turn it over. We're going to do the same thing right here. We're going to go in through here, up and zip tie. Through here, up and zip tie. Try to get them as close to the center edge as you can. And line that up. And we're going to do the same thing here. One little zip tie here. One little zip tie here on the other side. And then we're going to pull them. It just takes a little while to get them in. We're going to tighten, and then we're going to tighten this one, hold on to that part that you put the zip tie through. We're going to take our scissors, cut, cut, and we're going to push these in towards each other so you're not going to get cut on them or they're not going to put a hole in your finger or your paint. Okay, and then we're going to pull these tight on this side. Same way we just did the other. Tighten the other on the other side. Hold this little piece underneath as close to the metal as you can. Then we're going to snip. Snip. And we're going to push them in toward the metal. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take um, another bigger zip tie and we're going to put it right here in the center. And this is what's going to keep you from having to use any kind of glue. These thicker zip ties right here. So you see where the center is right here where the two pieces come together? You're going to put one of these bigger zip ties in because they're stronger. Grab that piece before, oh, got to grab it before it slips out. I know these zip ties are a little tedious, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it. I love these things. Tina did it, <laughs> is a genius for coming up with this idea. I have needed this for so long. 
Okay, I'm so tired of hunting for all my colors, you know, in a big box, and I don't want to invest in a lot of money for like, you know, something wooden to hang on your wall. I want something small that's going to fit on my shelves and where I can keep all my colors together. Okay, and then we're going to take our trusty little ties. I mean, our trusty little metal cutter here to cut our ties in the middle. And we're going to turn that down once again to where nobody's going to get poked. Now, you see that? That's on there. That is on there. You don't need any glue or anything like that. This thing is not, even if it fell over, it's not coming apart. And then the next thing you do is you just take your paints and you start putting them in. Let's see, we'll go with uh, the blues are right here, so we'll start with them. I'll just show you how I did it. Go, I went from lightest to darkest. You place them right in here. These will hold up to seven. And then you can even put a couple in the middle. This one this is like a little snug fit, but it holds them in really nice. I had a light blue left over from the other side, so I put it in here. But to show you, it will hold. Two in the middle, in these little middle ones here. And then you do the same on that side. And that's pretty much what you have. And you can fill this, 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 and this. One of these is going to cost you $4 and some zip ties. You can't beat that. So I think that this was just a wonderful idea. Oh, and also on this little thing right here that I made, you can also fit... Your little paint palette in here and it holds it very nicely then rinse it off and put it back in there and put it on the shelf when you are done with it so you have everything that you need for painting so I really appreciate everybody stopping by and checking this out thank you to Tina did it I wanted this kind of organization and just couldn't figure it out at first now she's into making um, a thing out of dollar store. Um, they're like little wire wire rack coolers for like, you know, cookies, things like that when you take them out. And these napkin ring holders right here. And she's making things to put on the wall that will hold your K-cups. We don't drink coffee, so I won't be making one of those. But... Genius girl. It's just genius. I love it. And I also love what I created, which was this. So you can just take it off the shelf. You got everything that you need to sit down and start painting. You can pull from these the colors that you're going to need. Or you can take one whole thing down at a time or all of them. But like I said, I made four. I have a lot of paint. So this has worked out really well for me. If you have not visited Tina Did It, uh, her channel, that's her channel name, please go over and do that. She's doing some really great things over there. She has a lot of subscribers, and um, she's doing good things. So I'm really glad you all stopped by, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I love all of you. 
take care and give this a try. And if you come up with a better way to do it, if you want to, you know, maybe take a single one and put it this way on top of this one or whatever, just make sure if it's going to be very heavy that you use these on the bottom to stabilize and make sure you do it with the Gorilla Clear Glue. Um, the tip for today, like I said, is wash your brushes after each use. Dry them and put them back in a covered container or just a Ziploc bag. Roll it up and keep it in something. And that's my tip for the day. And I am in love with my new organizational acrylic paint storage and my paint supply holder with my paint pens, paint brushes, palette, and the rags to wipe my brushes off on. So have a great day. Love you all. Hugs from the southeast coast of Florida, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.